every Pokemon that's been portrayed in real life. All of them are getting ranked. For now, all 55 of them. You've got to be selective with what Pokemon you adapt to the real world, because some of them can't even hack the transition from Sprite to 3D, let alone venturing behind the bookshelf and crossing into our dimension. I might have missed a couple, but I can't find a single trace of them or a single source that isn't just, yeah, my dad works for Nintendo. He told me Magnet Mike's in the movie. Pokemon's too big. You know there'll be more real life adaptations coming in the future. And I'll be right there to give them the business as well as I am right now for these 55 real life Pokemon. Flareon and Ditto must have been heavy on the source down the daycare center. Their egg hatched fetal alcohol syndrome, Evie. Said something similar in the fossil video about Armaldo, but no, this time... That is dead on. I am diagnosing it right here and now. What is Eevee doing with the facial structure of a creepy pasta Teletubby? You'd think for arguably Pikachu's counterpart, they would have let it marinate more in Blender. If this is the actual concept art, then someone was taking a few creative liberties here. It's not even liberty, that's straight creative independence. Another one that's hideous by design. I can't fault the 3D artists at all. They did a bang up job for the source they were given to work with, but there's no universe you're adapting Mr. Mime into that doesn't portray it as something that's ambiguously on some kind of register. Luckily, it wasn't the Galarian one. The only way that version of Mr. Mime is reaching millions of viewers on worldwide screens is on Catch a Predator. I simply refuse to accept the energy real Mr. Mime is giving off. It gives off the aura of their mandatory NPCs you run into on a high street and they force you to see their card tricks or you have to listen to them talk about Buddhism for 20 minutes but really they're just wanting you to give them two quid. Real Mr. Mime is like when you're at restaurants in Italy or France or somewhere and a mandatory street NPC just spawns at your table and starts singing Elvis songs while you're trying to skin the bones out your sea bass and then they guilt you into giving them a fiver to compensate them for providing you with an unskippable cutscene with your Meal. It's just a more accepted version of Crackhead trying to wash your windscreen at a red light. Oh jeez, for fuss, another Mr. Mime. I don't care if you're only pretending to touch the car, I just don't want you anywhere near it. He has like freckles too. That is not a Pokemon. That right there is a homunculus. <laughs> Do you know me? Always advocating for more face-ripping monkeys in the Pokemon realm and for the already existing monkeys to be tapping into that potential. And here comes a hyper-realistic Apom to make me question ever wanting any of that beef. Apom's tail looks built to tear faces off, but I just know it insists on using the teeth to get the job done. They just had to fill its mouth up with them uncanny human pearly whites. Always a bad play for little third-dimensional creatures, but they're Meant to be terrifying. A force against the protagonists, even. One of my favorite parts of Detective Pikachu was when the APOMs got aggressive and the main guy said, Oh my god, oh my god, it's exactly like Joel Rogan said. So it's fair game to make them look this jarring. They delivered on what they wanted, but it doesn't mean I have to like it. Such an easy game to make any creature that much more unnerving. You equip them with boogies, snow white chompers. I don't care how lore accurate these ones are. The Loudreds are looking foul. Loudred. Because they're looking foul and fill me with a sense of dread. Unprecedented levels of hideous. The likes of which hadn't been seen since. This is how Pokemon graphics will be in 2014. Doesn't even look 3D modeled at some angles. Looks more like it's going to jump scare me in between watching SpongeBob and Drake and Josh to devour purple and brown. Banger of a terrifying terrifying clay monster, vile, real-life Pokemon. Imolga is another case where it had to have the huge weird eyes slapped onto it. I'm just not a fan of these creatures that look like I could rattle their brain and get two free spins on the magic eight balls. But with Imolga, I don't really know what you could have done about that. It's the only way you could go about its design, really. Again, no fault of the 3D artists. It's just I know you're lying to me if this was your favorite looking one. Just look at that render someone cropped out. Looking like the crack fox from the Mighty Boosh. Giving me PTSD. To 2008 watching disaster movie in cinemas. 
I can't sit here and say Rufflip is a bad adaptation. It's going to be looking a bit goofy in any realm you spawn him in. A weird Pokemon to choose knowing it look as though it's got googly eyes welded on him. Rufflip looks like its eyeballs had Botox. Those are uncanny valley googly eyes, like the fear us humans naturally have when staring into the eyes of what we may think is a doppelganger or skinwalker. Real life Rufflip has the kind of eyes that give off that same primal fear to a Furby. Out of all the birds, they could have chosen. Its purpose in Detective Pikachu is to mount lampposts. The guy's an extra. It could have been, I don't know, Hoot Hoot would have fit the Night City atmosphere as well, depending on the angle you see him at. It's just not the best Pokemon to be stepping into the real world. Next up, I've got to say, is simply Rattata. Not just because it's a large purple rodent that I do not care for. There's just too little of a sample to go off here. Rattata's only seen properly in the background like once, behind the cage, where it belongs. From what I can tell, I think they pulled it off accurately. I don't know, I can't really see him. Definitely looks as though it'd make living in New York even more hellish. But how can you be that bothered about it? Has two seconds of screen time and you never consensually encounter one of them anyway. So just don't care. You talk about maximizing your minutes. They had Graveler all rigged up and ready for animation. You only see him for one second. He saw the cage fight kicking off as an opportunity, like invading the camera shot of a live news reporter on the street so you can do the grapefruit technique in the background, showing off his rollout back to the boys down the cave, pointing at himself in the movie like SpongeBob in the 3 a.m. Krusty Krab advert. If they had a Graveler just laying about, I'm surprised you don't just see one in the background fixing a pothole in the road or drinking cement down the cafe sat on the fruit machines. The public wouldn't even know what it looks like if someone hadn't misplaced their boulder. Looking a bit devious from the missing poster. I reckon there's some potential there, but it's just not enough to really go off with this one. For something that's about 90% human, you'd think Machamp would be an easy transition. Just a jack dude with extra arms. You probably could have just got like Larry Wheels to mocap and throw in CG from the neck upwards. Arguably the most human looking Pokemon, and it's looking like one of the most unnatural here. Even Machoke with the full two-armed human build would be looking a bit dodgy. I can see why they kept him visible in JPEG form only. Machamp standing about in that real street. It's over here directing traffic a few steps away from a 460 kilo Studio Ghibli monster having a wee slumber in traffic and it's still looking like the most monstrous thing on the road. And King Lewis here too, somewhere. Uh, did you miss him? Wonder how many tickets to the cinema it took for somebody to finally clock King Lewis in the movie. I didn't even know if it was in the movie. I'm still convinced this article I'm reading is off the mark and they've just clocked something off DeviantArt. A really good 3D model if it's off DeviantArt in all fairness. So I'm just hoping they know what they're on about. King Lewis actually is in the movie. It's next to the police department at some point. You only really see its claws floating about behind the car. But I would still be convinced that this is just a fan-made King Lewis model running Unreal engine 4. Maybe it only looks rough because it wasn't actually in the movie properly. And this just looks more like a test render. Purloin is a decent enough one, but out of all the Pokemon on set, it's very clearly another one of the extras in catering. If Purloin acted in The Walking Dead, it'd be performing in the role of Stationary Torso. Here it'd just be listed on the credits somewhere as Pocketmon number 52. The one who eats the soup. A decent crack here, but not exactly memorable. But you need some mid-card talent Pokemon to fill out the card a bit, to blend in for the world building. No one's paying their ticket to see the Purloin movie, but that's okay. I'm mainly just shocked Purloin made the auditions over Meowth. Next, we have Sneasel. Very faithful to the ice creature, yes. It's a tricky one to sort out, so I can't fault it. But something about Sneasel just looks a bit dodgy. Like physically, its dimensions are just slightly off. Gives me the same feeling as looking at yourself with the camera inverted. Almost as though this could just as easily appear in one of the live action Sonic movies. Built like whatever alien species Blaze the Cat would be. You only see Ordino for a few glimpses, but it looks decent enough. Zero issues, no beef in here. I can't take issue. I can't grill a creature that I just don't care enough about to begin with. See, I don't care Ordino specifically is here, but I'm still glad it is. I'm mainly just happy Unova had a surprisingly good amount of showcasing in a Pokemon movie. Like Ordino made the movie, but Chansey didn't. 
Aha, dickhead. That would have ruined a lot of people's Akus on Skybet predicting the Pokemon. I don't care much for Audino here, but I do care for what it stands for. Keeping it diverse. Fighting against Cantonian dominance on the market. An underrated aspect of these is the attention to detail of sizing. Joltics are only seen as a background extra, so you could say there's not enough really to base a decent opinion on. Not enough sampling required to go in on. But if it were clapped looking, you'd easily know. Joltics in hordes hanging out on tables. If they were a pest, Octillery would be chucking them in the wok for a stir fry. Joltics are a great choice for world building because they really sell me on just how awful the Pokemon world would be to live in. Not just because they'd have us erecting statues of metagrosses and have us living in quick balls but just that shot of these little fellas climbing all over the electrical wiring not only would that be such a hassle it's just this world is so packed it's so busy C can i just get one minute away from these mutants no you probably can't you can't even go downstairs to get your mail without getting g checked by a psyduck first it's joltix cutting off your electricity then it's orfworm eating your house I think Snubble is another one that's looking foul, but that would be the case in any art style. So I've got to say, nice adaptation, bringing that mean mugging to the big screen. Hey, you even remember this disgusting little skin dress flapping about the place. So I can't complain because it is pretty good. How have they got a Pokemon looking so criminal working down the police department? <laughs> Comfy and Flay Bebe are seen floating about the sky. And from what I can tell, they would maybe be a lot higher on the list here because they seem like a true one-to-one -one recreation of the pocket creatures. You get only glimpses of them falling from the sky here and there. So there's not too many samples there for me to base my opinions on. But another really good selective choice from what I can tell. One of those Pokemon that you couldn't really do wrong with adapting to the real world. Flower-based creatures, very easy 3D model job. There's no real compromise on having to make them realistic like Charizard scales or Jigglypuff's fur. For you alterations if any necessary and they just work. Another big dub for Gen 5, Buffalo. Tauros has had enough action. You could already credit Tauros in any movie that has a standard bull standing around somewhere. I love that Ditto has the choice to transform into anything at once. And it chose to become a Buffalo specifically for Johnny Knoxville, a guy. Another great world building choice. Doesn't look out of place or too wacky roaming about a field. Of course, just as I praise something for not looking too wacky. I'm just imagining the filmmakers all watching back the final draft to Detective Pikachu like, Yeah, it's good. It's just, uh, can we get more Lick and Song in there? Is it just, I really think we gotta get more Lick and Song in there. God, just 10 seconds. It's all I ask for. Can he like get sloppy with him on a bus or something? Lick and Song had me thinking, this was where they maybe should have drawn the line. A bit too ambitious to be pulling off. There was no way you're bringing this vile amphibian into the real world without getting the exact reaction you'd expect. Really needed to throw the lead character in Pokemon's version of the unavoidable crackhead talking to you on the tube situation objectively is freakish horrid but it's such a fun and risky pokemon choice to have adapted so i can't not rate it highly seeing lickitung in a trailer would fully sell me on watching a movie you know what's been missing in cinema the box office draw is coming back like you're paying to see king kong godzilla a bear on jumbo amounts of gear i want to see that tongue in action and there's only one place for it the big screen i like this lickitung design in the same way that i wish i could watch the sonic movies with ugly sonic still in it. Jigglypuff is a solid portrayal. This is just me not paying attention for the last 20 years, but it came out a lot furrier than I'd expected. I mean, obviously, yeah, that would be a little quiff, not some kind of rubber whipped cream or shaved floppy Donkey Kong antenna. So it's gonna have some hair. Guess I just never really questioned what Jigglypuff's full body would be made of. At face value, you look at a Chansey, it's fair to assume Jigglypuff could have been about as hairy as an egg. It makes sense, sure. And it looks really good. But for me, seeing this would be like meeting Kirby for the first time, like, Wait, you're, you're not... I'm oh, sorry, this is so rude of me. This whole time I thought you were bald. You little baldy. Can you believe it? I know I gave Apom a bit of heat for the veneers that they've all had installed, but I've got to say, the boogie Snow White chompers work in Gengar's favor here. I think they do. I can't tell what I think of this Gengar. I'm sickened. 
yet curious. Is it good or is it an abomination that you lot in the comments are going to have to tell me because I am 50-50. I don't know. On one hand, I rate that it's a ghoulish mutant gassing up the place. On the other, it sickens me the way it's smiling at you like it's swallowed a gum shield made of thwomps. But again, that's nothing to do with the 3D art here. That's just classic Genga. I'm very unsure where I stand on Mewtwo here. Because it looks too hyper-realistic to the point of looking almost comical again. Got the neck of a 90-year-old man. All veiny. Might as well have full-body tattoos of liver spots on him. This is what Liver King is going to look like if he makes it past 70. It looks great in the dark with the front headlights on. But chuck him out on a cold, rainy day in Stoke. And he's looking a bit slimy. As a freakish lab experiment gone wrong should do. He should have all of those things and probably more. It should look even slimier, actually. So great work making Mewtwo look like a fridge alien that got locked in the freezer for 20 years. But it's far from one of my favorites here. Psyduck, all in all, a great portrayal of a neurodivergent duck. They've even included Psyduck's iconic exposed nerve ending. They presented him exactly as you'd expect. But my head cannon is tilted slightly because the whole scene where he's baiting Pikachu out to rub his feet in the car, he's self-aware. He knows what he's doing. Psyduck giving you the side eye for some foot squeezing. He's holding everyone around him hostage. Yeah, Pikachu. Gives a foot rub, or I'm gonna start beeping. Has me thinking Psyduck's just faking the autism for perks, exaggerating disabilities to get a TikTok following. You know Pidgeot had to look fresh for that final battle against Mewtwo. It had to for that little semi callback to Pikachu flying on Pidgeotto. All of the airborne Pokemon seem to exist in our world so seamlessly. Pidgeot is simply looking clean. Doduo and Trio look spot on, Donny. Real shame the two couldn't really get used properly, but I don't really know how you propose. Like, guys, trust me, I've made this one-to-one -one model of the Doduo Trio pair. I've rigged it and everything. Can we, can we just please fit it in the movie somehow? I don't know, just have a... Have a little part where one of the heads licks him on a train or something. What they really should have had in the background was Octillery serving all three heads at one of the street food stands. They start having their little Three Stooges moment fighting over who gets the last bit of Joltik stir fry. <laughs> Lot of tongue action in this movie. Way more than expected for a Pokemon flick. A big day for softcore Vore fans. Greninjas get portrayed as absolute demons as they should. Like, the whole movie, with spoilers, obviously, if you should care, is built around you thinking Mewtwo attacked the guy's dad, side-striked his car, flipped him off a bridge. Then you find out the whole time it was Greninja's that done did it. So they're shown as a creature that can believably throw attacks on par with the most powerful fridge alien science can grow. Now that's a good portrayal right there. You see slacking very sporadically, but it's always a welcome sight. Whether it's monging out behind the scenes of a TV studio, whether it's monging out in the booth of a dive bar, whether it's monging out at an underground cockfighting ring, sees it kick off and decide, True ability be damned. It's time for some looting, boys. Just lazing about like the long lost relative of Sassy the Sasquatch. This is a slacking that just wants the tradesman's life, along with the Machamps and the Gravelers, wants all the Culture with zero working hours. That's a man who lives life his way. Fears no judgment if he wants the grafter's lifestyle, but only the part where you clock out and get pissed on the weekend. But 24-7, that's his prerogative. I mean, who's gonna stop him? Highest base stat on the list, almost. The main villain, whoever he is, he had the wrong idea taking Mewtwo's body. I'd have been transferring my brain to be in the body of this unit. A slacking with a motivated grafter mentality. Unstoppable. I always found it so comically stupid that the main villain was just sat around waiting at his desk with an Eevee and a Firestone until you show up just so we could evolve it right in front of you before starting his little monologue. He just has like four new Flareons behind his chair from messing up the timing because the cleaners came in. You know I'd have loved to have seen Jolteon, but Flareon, it's understandable. Probably the easiest to make when you've already sorted Growlithe and Arcanine. And the hyper-realistic Vaporeon would have got a lot of people banned from their local cinemas. This movie dropping, I said it was a big day for Vore fans, but not that big. Flareon looks top shelf here. It's actually been proportioned properly. I'm glad you're only subjected to making eye contact with that Eevee for a split second before it's forced into evolution. Something in that Firestone must have some kind of fetal alcohol syndrome healing properties that must be studied. 
banger choice of Pokemon to showcase in the first scene. They must have known they landed the triple 20 when making Cubone. I don't think you could get a more spot on Cubone. I'm convinced they went out of their way to dig up a real Mother Marowak to get the skull for exact reference. So speaking of complicated relationships with your mum, the Chris Chan dimensional merge will finally happen as prophesized when those portals open and cartoon characters enter our world. When Cubone hops in, it's gonna look exactly like this. Trico was looking a little bit rough at some angles. In the little behind the scenes trailer they did especially. But I can give the little gecko the benefit of the doubt here. And assume the lighting just wasn't doing it any favours there. Because where the action is. When the lighting of the environment matches it. If only for a few brief moments. The fellow's looking clean. Seeing them all suctioned up on the glass. In his element. Perfect. Real Ludicolos serving up coffee in the movie. But I feel like any minute now, it's gonna try to sell me a sugary breakfast cereal. I never realized just how honey monster coded Ludicolo's been this whole time. I always thought that was Electivire's gimmick, but it's looking like he's got a Little's own brand selling cereals at half the price to be on the lookout for. I figured Ludicolo was a hairy boy. I knew it wasn't some kind of sentient pineapple that can bust out Fortnite dances, but I guess I just never thought it'd be looking so stylish. Looks like something that get hunted down by Cruella Deville's front bonnet. Half his time taking shifts down the cafe is probably sweeping up his own belly hair. But this may be a rare case where I can easily say the real life version is sweeping up the original. Now I just want to see him skin faded. I was a bit skeptical in Charizard back when the movie was coming out. I thought it looked occasionally jarring at some points, but it's just one of them. Like how else would you really have Charizard presented in our plane of living? Once you take a minute to face reality that you're gonna need to lather him down in reptilian wrinkles. Once you face the facts that he can't just be textured like a pop vinyl. It's a sound real mon. Way more expressive than you'd have imagined going into it. I know they're doing the whole every animal in movies must act like a dog trope, but Charizard whimpering staring into the eyes of Arceus when Magikarp evolves. That's a good bit. And Charmander is just lovable all around. Texture him however you want. I reckon that head would be like putting your palm on a maxed out kitchen hob. But you know, it's still getting rubbed. It's a close call with some of the Kanto starters here. I guess I never really questioned how fat a Squirtle would be if one were on my lap. As these little thick sausage limbs folded into each other, I guess that's how he withdraws into his shell so easily. They can fold inwards in a second flat. Don't know how it's possible with that shell though. Squirtle, I think he needs to go a size or two up. Might as well be wearing an Under Armour vest. But it's great to know Squirtle has just as slappable a bald head in reality and would still most likely be my choice out of the Kanto 3. And evolving into a real Blastoise makes me think that's the right decision. How could you see him bust out that rapid spin and not think your pet turtle is a complete baller? I'm telling you, he was robbed in that cage fight against the Gengar. Got off lucky that Blastoise didn't hydro pump those snow white chompers off into the crowd. Aside from, in my opinion, Ludicolo, Torterra might have one of the biggest pure upgrades here. It's far from one of my favorite starters going. I can still admit it's looking sound in the sprite form, but the real life filter makes it look legendary. Obviously, hooking them up to the HGH, inflating them full of growth hormones would have that effect. But even the standard sized ones look so much more stoic. Real life conveys just how earthy Torterras are in a way that cartoons could never. I fully understand why they took the gamble on making Ruffler. If it was all just so Braviary could be shown, then it paid off. Something so uncanny valley, so freakishly unnatural in nature looking to evolve into Braviary. Looking like it fits into our world perfectly. In the best way possible, relative to everything else here, Braviary doesn't feel too much like a Pokemon. Big and wee fluffy pandas sat on public benches with us humans. Like they're also waiting outside Primark for an hour for the missus to finally emerge. They're just like us. It looks so organic. I can't believe how much they've managed to completely portray my headcanon of Pangoro. That Pangoro looks fed up. He's had enough. Having to deal with the kids for the weekend after his third divorce settlement. That panda drives class two lorries and gets angry about vegan sausage rolls. That small bamboo shoot it's chewing on. It's just a four kid censorship for all the Newports it smokes. 
mad how seamless they've managed to make a big iron golem look standing outside a train station. I look twice when I see armed police officers about the entrance, but I don't think it even fazed me seeing a wild golurk at the doors. I'd feel much safer in them hands. What a great deterrent to violence. The potential of getting your entire body turned into a red mist after tanking a singular shadow punch. Why does the supernatural iron giant look more natural in a public setting than an Olympian duckman? Arcanine and Growlithe showing up everywhere, making the city feel alive. And each time you catch one bobbling that fur about, it's more satisfying to look at than the last. How the fur is textured and animated, it just massages my brain. You already know it's a banger. Easiest IRL banger to make. One of the most transferable Pokemon to the real world. There's a reason why Growlithe and Arcanine are such basic and common choices for people's favorite. They are peak your co-worker's favorite Pokemon. It's all about the relatability. Everyone would want a pet like this. Every Pokemon fan wants a large fluffy dog to mimic having an Arcanine. Togepi, you don't overthink it. Just straight make that boy out of Play-Doh. Looking so plastic, it can talk to other Pokemon and the cast of Toy Story. There was no real life transitioning needed. It can exist as it was in both Pokemons and our world. A lot of Pokemon, you're going to have to compromise on aspects of the design. But Togepi, I'm so glad they didn't feel the need to give it a layer of fuzz or the texture of a hairy lollipop. They even made sure the egg is evenly cracked. The edges are all the same size, as if it's it's part of its biology and less like a dropped medium free range that Togepi happened to be attached to and decided to live in for the rest of his life. Because, you know, that's what it actually is. I'm glad they didn't stupidly try to make it look like a realistic egg hatch. Or maybe we're just seeing the cleanest, most symmetrical egg break mankind has ever witnessed. They were on the money just animating it like a Pixar character. Octillery looks amazing. Would easily dine for some street food from him. This is like some next level food chain dominance. It's one thing standing no chance against an apex predator, but it's just taking the piss when they've written an entire cookbook about you. Octillery isn't just eating other Pokemon, it's flipping them on the wok for profit. It's educating others on what spices go well with your species. Hard days work serving the most elite street food to the people, then straight to the underground cockfighting ring to whack the payslip all in on Gengar. Where I was saying you'd need to be selective of what Pokemon you try to adapt to our world. A sleeper banger. Morlow is such a good shout to have brought in because it looks one-to-one. -one. The lighting is on point. Seamlessly transitions to the big screen. No design compromise needed. No one was growing up with a childhood family pet Morlow flying around the gaff. So there's none of that. Well, that's just not how a levitating fairy mushroom would look. Now is it? Immersion ruined. Get up, children. We're going home and watching Norbit. So you can just sculpt them like a Mario power-up, light them up like a gamer's goon chamber, and you're golden. You'd be hard-pressed to botch making Ditto. I would have imagined a real-life movie version of this to look like clay, like one of those old 3D Pokemon cards. But given it the same consistency as a Chug Chug was a mighty fine touch, this translucent purple goes hard. Textures you can feel through sight only. You just know it'd be like grabbing one of those water wigglers that every kid tried using like a flashlight. The chaotic but smoothly animated blob really sells the whole failed Mew clone theory. Any form, any filter, Totodile is the man. Don't care if his skin would feel like you're trying to rub the grip off a tractor wheel. That belly is getting a good old rub. Completely fulfilled what my head canon of what Totodile would be like realistically. Like a poorly trained dog who'd snap your fingers off and you'd still be trying to stroke its head with only your thumb left because you just can't stay mad at him. No matter how many times they bite me, I refuse to learn my lesson. I'd have zero concept of classical conditioning. Keep me around these four Totodiles long enough and they'd have worn my arms down to the point of having to stroke them with my forehead. Magikarp looks exact. I don't think they could have done a better job at that. And it's looking tasty. It makes me want to get one on the grill. I don't care about its zero nutritional value. It'd be getting comically consumed. One pull, slide out the mouth. Only clean bone left over. But I think I'd have to resist my dog-like instincts to consume anything even remotely grillable. Because Gyarados looks as majestic as you'd hoped. Real-life Gyarados looks like a prop you'd see for a dangerous roller coaster 
themed around a tsunami happening that four people apparently lost their legs on. Even though, typically, I'm a squirtle inclined man, it's times like these that truly test my faith. About to go rogue and change sides after watching the Bulbasaur horde cross in their little pond. They just look refreshing to be around. If I owned one of these, it'd be so untrained. It'd be pissing or leaking pollen on the carpets in the house, fatally vine whipping small children down the park. Don't care. It's not getting any training to risk evolving. That bulb would be plugged up with an Everstone to ensure a 100 year reign of being small and chubby. But with that being said, Venusaur's lurking about somewhere too. I couldn't clock him in the movie. Don't think he was in it. But this little extra of them showing off his non-frog like walking cycle, it only tells me the big man also did Delivers. I don't know why they had this one in the chamber and just left it there. You've already brought the big man in on set. You might as well use the asset. Slot the big un at the back of the horde. Have him there like Super Kami Guru. Finally getting around to the big man. The amount of awe this unit could and definitely has inspired genuinely like a Ghibli monster chucked onto the street. Only looking even more fresh with the juxtaposition of being in the same shot as Machamp, who's looking like a somehow even more mutant ninja turtle. They weren't shy making Snorlax one-to-one. -one. They got his titties spilling out on the sidewalk. What an empowering specimen. So brave. Snorlax could have his own Pixar short looking like this. We've come a long way from Sid's Dreamcast dog. Sid's dog was the butterfly effect for us to one day see Snorlax and his furry man tits on the big screen. I'm never one to glory hunt, to go with the popular choice for that reason alone. But obviously, Pikachu is the best looking real life Pokemon. It's a bit unfair, I know. It has the most evidence to ponder. It got the most attention to detail. It's voiced by Wrexham FC co-owner. Like, obviously, it's Pikachu. You're not selling Ryan Reynolds on spending the next few months in a booth to dub over... Mr. Mime. And I know everyone's rinsed it. I think they even had a petition back in 2019. But I think Rob McElhenney, he got his wrong friend to be voicing his Pikachu. But we'll, but we'll let it slide for now. And I'll also let those weird magic eight ball eyes slide too. Pikachu doesn't look like he's Nectar Witcher's potion the way Emolga does. And most of all, He's a bit fat. They didn't skimp out and modernize Pikachu. They were faithful to the source material that he is canonically a little porker. Now you know me, I like my Pikachus to look as though they don't get priority on their quick attacks. Bang a job. They managed to make a chubby overgrown rodent look worthy to not only enter the house, he can sleep in the bed and all. I don't even care. Just get hairs everywhere, whatever. Shock me a bit, whatever.